let's now move on to skill-related fitness. As I said before, a good program takes into consideration all of the measurable parameters of fitness and makes an effort to bring them all into balance with one another. Bringing into balance the components that make up a person's skill-related fitness is often overlooked though. Many people focus on one or two skill-related fitness factors at the detriment to the development of the others. So someone who trains to improve their physique might develop a significant amount of power, but their agility, coordination, and reactive ability may end up underdeveloped. Someone who trains to get better at skiing may increase their balance, agility, and coordination, but lacks speed and power. It's important to build a well-rounded program allowing for the improvement in all areas of skill-related fitness. Agility, balance, coordination, speed, power, and reactive ability. So let's talk about building a program. How do you put all of this information together to build a program specifically for you? We can liken an exercise program to the business plan a well-led company creates to hit quarterly and yearly targets. The company starts every fiscal year by quantifying where they currently stand and then using realistic data-driven goals, they determine where they would like to be by the year's end. Once they have their goals in mind, they break down the year further by creating milestones to hit every quarter, then developing methods of keeping on top of business practices so as to reach those milestones on time. The further they break down the fiscal year into smaller, more manageable chunks, the more finely tuned the necessary steps become and the more likely that they'll hit their intended targets and goals. The business plan uses the same approach good coaches and trainers take with their clients and athletes and will become the method that you use to achieve your own success. Also, once you understand the principles of a good program and how it's designed and how to use it to achieve your fitness goals, you can actually take these same steps and same concepts and apply them to other non-fitness related goals and achieve those as well. To start any effective program, you'll need to decide where you would like to end up at the program's completion. As an example, let's use losing 30 pounds of fat. Now you have two pieces of information, those being where you are today and where you would like to be when you have achieved your goal. We will take these two events and plot them out on a long time bar called a macro cycle. The start of the time bar is today and the end of the time bar is the date that you plan on achieving your goal. Looking great so far, but you still don't know the length of time the macro cycle bar should represent, right? Don't just end the duration of the macro cycle arbitrarily. Instead, it's important that you pick an end to the macro cycle that is really in its achievement time. You should aim not to undershoot or overshoot your target, but rather to be as accurate as possible. Having a small buffer of say like 15% of extra time to achieve your goals is ideal, as this can accommodate for any minor hiccups and setbacks that you will inevitably encounter. However, the reason you don't want to undershoot excessively is that this can cause you to spend too much time in certain stages of the program you could have otherwise progressed from much earlier, as well as stagnate the achievement of future goals. Likewise, you don't want to overshoot the time to achieve your goals, as this will lead to frustration and potentially cause you to give up. And the next obvious question is, how do you decide what the time frame of the macro cycle should be? The answer is you work backward by applying expected results based on what science has told us a person can achieve through training. Since our goal is to lose 30 pounds of fat, we will need to know the expected time frame for that result. How long should it take to lose 30 pounds of fat safely? Well, a good target for most people to shoot for when they're losing fat is one to two pounds a week, with two pounds a week being on the more ambitious side of things. An important thing to note is that many people lose a significant amount of weight, sometimes up to 10 pounds, in the first week following an exercise and nutrition program. The initial extra weight loss can usually be attributed to the loss of excess water as they clean up their diet. Their weight loss will normalize after a week or so. Once they are on their plan, exercising regularly, and eating within their nutrition plan, the person can expect to lose between one or two pounds per week consistently. So knowing that you can expect to lose two pounds per week, you could just divide 30 pounds to be lost by the pounds per week, giving you 15 weeks until you reach your goal. However, one thing to consider when you are setting your, uh, your target is leaving room for the odd hiccup or setback in your training or nutrition adherence. You may miss a day or two of exercise one week or find yourself overeating at a friend's party three weeks into a program. As a way of accounting for these possible hiccups, for my clients, I usually suggest backing the common weight loss off to about 1.5 pounds per week. This minor adjustment will increase the time frame slightly to 20 weeks, giving you a larger margin for the inevitable small setbacks most people will experience along the way. You've now set your time frame for losing 30 pounds over the next 20 weeks. If your macro cycle timeline starts on January 1st and losing 30 pounds pounds was your goal, then you would mark your end point for the calendar at May 21st. Now you're getting somewhere, but you still don't know what you'll be doing for the next 20 weeks. To do this, you'll fill in your macro cycle with smaller, more manageable, and detail-oriented sections called mesocycles. A mesocycle is a chunk of time, usually two to six weeks, in your training devoted to focusing on and improving one parameter of your fitness, such as strength or endurance or power, speed, agility, or anaerobic or aerobic capacity. Now I'm not saying every exercise in a mesocycle without exception will be oriented to one particular parameter of fitness. However, the majority of the exercise
exercise in a mesocycle cycle should be selected based on their similar effects on one's fitness. As I said earlier, a mesocycle cycle typically lasts between two and six weeks before moving into the next mesocycle cycle. So when to transform from one cycle to the next will be based on the macro cycle time frame and your overall goal. As we discussed before, the body will only continue to adapt to a particular point with exercise before plateauing. Regularly introducing new mesocycles cycles prevents the body from plateauing by continuously providing new stimulus necessary for it to adapt to. Now this course is centered around helping those who are new to exercise. As such, I'll give you an example of the four mesocycles I would lay out for a client of mine who is new to exercise.